Welcome to episode three of the Level Up Leadership Show. My name is Mike Malnick, and man, I hope you've been enjoying the MVC network. So make sure to go ahead and like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel. And what we did was we made a playlist just for all of the Level Up Leadership shows. So you can go in and, and watch all the shows there on our YouTube channel, or you can go into Facebook and find them in our videos. Well, these leadership shows, they're really designed to help you grow as a leader. Because let's be honest, we can all afford to grow as leaders. Well, H.P. Lytton said this, we do on some, what we do on some great occasion will probably depend on what we already are. And what we are will be the result of previous years of self-discipline. What's hard about discipline is that it's not a one-time decision. I mean, that quote, there's so much truth to it that you're just not going to wake up one day and do something great, all right? You're not just going to you know, launch a new product, come up with a great idea that chances are it's going to be building upon who you already are and who you are is going to be based upon weeks, months, and probably years of making good decisions and forming good habits and, 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 um, and putting great disciplines into your life. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, you're just going to make one right decision and feel like, you know what? Oh, I'm a disciplined person, right? You can't go to the gym once, okay, and say, I'm disciplined, okay? Um, disciplines are developed um, over weeks, months, and years. So many of our successes and our defeats are going to be tied to the disciplines that we have or the lack thereof. I mean, everyone wants to hit that game winning shot, don't we? I mean, but there are very few who are willing to practice that game winning shot day in and day out, week in and week out. I can remember as a young boy growing up, I grew up in a little town in Northern Ontario called Perry Sound, Ontario in Canada. And I grew up playing hockey and I think I was around 10 or 11 years old. And at this point, uh, you know, when you're growing up playing hockey, uh, you're just learning or just beginning to learn how to get that puck up off the ice. Whether it's a wrist shot or slap shot, you're just trying to, and, and so actually as a wrist shot, usually you can, by that age, you could get the puck up off the ice. Well, I was a defenseman. And so I wanted to learn how to take a slap shot and get the puck up off the ice because I knew at that age, if I could do that, that I'd be able to get a lot of points. I'd be able to score a lot of goals. And so what my dad did for me is we moved everything in our basement and he set up kind of this um, area where I could practice. So I would go downstairs, we bought a net, we put the net at one end of the basement and we didn't need to be, it was long and narrow, which worked perfectly. And I would sit down there and take slap shot after slap shot after slap. I mean, oh, like you're gonna ask my parents. I was down there for hours trying to teach and learn how to, what I needed to do, how I needed to hold the stick, how I needed to hit that puck so I could get that puck up off the ice, right? And get it up into that top corner of the net. But I spent days, hours, weeks, months down in that basement practicing that shot over and over and over again. And that's what discipline is. It's being able to practice something and instill it into your life over and over and over again. Well, the problem is, is very few people are willing to put the work in that it takes, right? To hit that game winning shot, right? To, to learn something about a new product, to be able to be that top salesman to put the work into going out and, and knocking on those doors, making those phone calls, sending those emails, um, you know, being visible on YouTube and social media so that you can have the kind of exposure it takes, right, to be at the top of your game, whether it's, you know, sales or merchandise or, you know, goods and services or whatever your field is, it takes hard work. And the truth be told, very few people are actually willing to put in the work to create the disciplines it takes to be really successful, not just as a businessman or businesswoman, but as a leader. So today, what we're going to talk about is habits of a disciplined leader. 
All right, so number one is practice self-care. You might think, well, this is a little bit odd uh, for a disciplined leader, but you need to, as a leader, practice self-care. Okay, now this is not a call to be selfish. That's not what I'm talking about. This is a call to make sure you and your body are in optimal condition, all right, to be able to be at the top of your field. Okay, because disciplined leaders know um, that they have to do a couple of things to make sure they're at their best. And leaders, great leaders, know they need to be at their best if they're going to be successful. So to practice the habit of self-care, a leader must do a few things. One, um, regular exercise, all right? Renew your mind and eat healthy. Those three things leaders need to begin to um, instill into their daily life schedule. Uh, basically, self-care means you take care of your body and your mind. You're not off doing drugs or drinking alcohol in excess or you know, overindulging, that you make sure that you're inputting good things into your body and into your mind and find ways to take care of that body and take care of that mind and guess what? It will take care of you. I have to say, I haven't been doing that great a job with a few of those that I've just listed, all right? Two out of the three of these that I just listed, honestly, I can do much better in, okay? Regular exercise, and eating healthy, okay? We're, we're filming this episode during the coronavirus, and I'll be honest, I'm, I'm not doing that well, all right? I'm, you know, eating things that I shouldn't, eating far more than I should, not exercising the way, you know, I typically try to exercise, and so I need to get better um, in instilling these disciplines into my life. But what's crazy is I love the way I feel, the way I look and my outlook on life when I'm eating healthy and when I'm exercising. But yet when you get out of that routine, it is so hard, right? To get back into a good routine. I mean, it is so hard. And I've always been the kind of guy who does it cold turkey. I mean, all right, I asked my wife, asked my kids, all right, I'm gonna eat healthy and go to the gym and boom. I mean, you know, I'm in the gym at 4.30 in the morning, you know, three or four times a day. I'm eating healthy and salads and chicken and not eating any sugar or fast foods and bam. Uh, but just recently, I've been doing some studying on the mind and the power of our minds and, and how creating habits in your life really starts with your mind. And I've been reading up on and studying it and just finding that actually cold turkey probably isn't the best way to um, instill a lifelong discipline. It might work for a period of time, but usually not long term. That if you want to have long term success, that you start a little bit at a time. And, and so, you know, just start a little bit, you know, don't feel like you need to go to the gym four days a week and never touch a piece of sugar because you'll do it for a week if you're lucky and then you're gonna be you know, eating everything you get your hands on, if you're anything like me. And, and so just take a little bit of a time, just cut, hey, maybe I'm eating too much chocolate, I'm gonna just kinda of cut this out of my life a few days a week, and, or maybe over the weekends, or you know what I mean, just start small. I'm gonna go and for a three, four, five minute walk a day, or three days a week, start small, and then you're gonna create that habit. So um, yeah, number one is to Practice self-care. Number two, respect your time and other people's time, all right? Discipline leaders know their time is valuable, all right? And it's one of the few things in life that is given to every single human being, it's time. And we all get the same amount of it too. No one person gets any more time than the other. Every single one of us gets 24 hours in a day 1,440 minutes in a day, 86,400 seconds in a day. Every one of us, we all get the same amount of time. But disciplined leaders, um, they know the time of others is valuable and they respect this. All right, these leaders, they show up on time. I have to say, this is my pet peeve, is being late. 
all right? I, it just, there's something on the inside of me that just rises up and twists and turns and I get anxious and stressed if I think I'm going to be late for something. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be something just insignificant that, you know, going to a movie, you know, no one's going to care if I show up to the movie late or not. But if the movie starts at nine o'clock and I want to be there, you know, a couple minutes before nine o'clock, then I, you know, and if we're out for dinner or we're somewhere where it looks like we're not going to be, I can't enjoy myself. And I would always leave huge amounts of time whenever Susie and I would go on a date night between eating and our movie. Because if I saw it getting too close, I wouldn't be able to enjoy my dinner knowing I, we might be late. For okay, Respect people's time. It's valuable. Your time is valuable, but so is everyone else's. All right? They respect the time limits that others have on them. All right? Leaders make wise decisions in how they spend their time. And this is really what separates successful, accomplished leaders from everybody else. If you're late for meetings, stop, all right? There, there's no excuse, just stop being late, all right? You have to account for traffic, you know, you have to account for certain things in, in the winter. You know, we live here in, in central New York, I have to account in January that if I have a meeting that I'm gonna have to probably, you know, wipe my car off of snow. It might take five or 10 minutes. You need to account for these things and make sure you show up to your meetings on time. If you don't have a plan for your day, begin to plan your days out, all right? And this was huge for me. I, I begin to plan out almost every hour of what I am doing, okay? Because if you find yourself working either too little or too much, you need to change it, all right? You know, you only have one shot if you're a parent, all right, in raising your kids. Don't be the absent parent that is working, you know, ridiculous amount of hours just for the sake of money, okay? Um, it, or maybe if you were, you, need, you were to evaluate, all right, your work habits, you might find that you waste too much time and you need to work a little bit harder, okay? Your time is valuable, all right? And you need to make sure you're making a habit to examine how you're spending your time throughout your day. All right, examine those, you know, maybe it's every couple of week, monthly, quarterly, that you look at your schedule and you look at your time. How am I spending my time? Where am I wasting time? Where do I feel like I don't have enough time? And you'll be amazed at what you're able to accomplish when you plan your days out, you respect your time and the times of others. All right, number three, master your thoughts. Okay, you wanna be a disciplined leader, you need to master your thoughts. All right, our thought lives, can be one of the most da damaging, sorry, I'll say it again. Our thought lives can be one of the most damaging or they can be one of the most beneficial things that we have in our life is our thoughts. You know, for me, I am a forever optimist to a fault, all right? I believe for the greatest things and, and I'm, I'm always, I know the glass is gonna be half full um, and, and disciplined leaders know that their thoughts, all right, impact how their days, weeks, and years are going to go. So they take captive their thoughts, all right? They place boundaries around the negativity inputs that they consume, all right? You can only consume so much negative thoughts and being around negative people. It takes a toll on you, all right? So place boundaries around yourself, who you hang out with, who you spend the most time with, okay? Choose to see the positive side to a negative situation. All right, I, I'm so blessed to work with, you know, great people, have a great team who, you know, can something negative, as I said earlier, we're, we're filming this in the middle of the coronavirus. Well, this whole MVC network started, why? In the middle of a very negative situation. People are getting sick, people are dying, and, and, and you know, we could have very, very easily kind of, you know, moped around, like we had to close the church where I work, and, you know, we just can't do things as normal, but that's not the team that I have. You know, they look, they begin to look at the positive side and, and find out different ways that we can reach people and that we can touch people's lives. You want to be around those kinds of people that can see the positive side to a negative situation. And they don't let others manipulate their thought life. Don't let others manipulate your thoughts, all right? Rein those thoughts in, take them captive, all right? Take captive those thoughts that are shouting at you that you're not good enough or you don't have what it takes. 
and replace those with thoughts of words of affirmation, all right? That this can be an accelerated, all right? That can be accelerated when you're being around other positive people, all right? It makes a difference who you spend your time with. All right, number four, focus on what's important. This is huge for leaders, all right? You have to be able to focus on what's important and what only you can do, right? Because life gets busy and we can get so scattered and piecemeal. And if you don't know what's coming up next, all right? Disciplined leaders do their best to avoid this, okay? I, I recently had to redo my entire schedule for this MVC network, all right? I was wasting too much time on things that didn't matter. And so I had to take my schedule, take my time, and I had to redo the whole thing. Disciplined leaders know that they can't be productive if they don't have, if they're not focusing on what's to come. It's easy to fall into a routine of busy work as a leader, okay? Um, and how you focus your time and efforts, okay, right? Because we only have so much, talked about it, everyone only has 24 hours in a day, okay? We only have so much time, all right? And every great leader has a great calendar system, all right? Um, and, to, and to schedule your time accordingly to what is most important, all right? You need to plan out your day. As I said, I recently had to redo my, my personal schedule for, for working. I mean, I had to literally go through hour by hour. This is what I'm gonna work on here. This is what I'm gonna work on here. And this is where I'm gonna take a break. Because, you know, put in breaks just because you have a hour by hour schedule doesn't mean it needs to be rigid and you're going from one task to another. You put in breaks. Hey, I'm gonna take a break here. I'm gonna give myself some extra time here. I'm gonna, but it really, really helped me to be able to get done all the things that I need to get done. And it gave me a peace of mind knowing, oh, that's gonna be finished on time because I have it scheduled to do it on Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock. It really, really helps you when you plan out your days, all right? Um, and, and so look at your calendar, know what's coming up and, and plan for those things that are most important and, and see what needs to be done, all right? And what doesn't need to be accomplished. Okay, and one of the things that great leaders learn to do is say no. And you're gonna have to say no to things that are not important to your mission, to your vision, all right? As a manager, you know, you might be a supervisor or a business owner, all right? And there's things that only you can do and, and you need to be able to say no to some things, okay? And so that you can concentrate on the things that are most important. If you're always saying yes to every idea, to everything that comes along, you're just never going to get to those most important things. And those most important things, chances are, if you're saying yes to everything else, that they're going to suffer, all right? So you need to, as a leader, be able to say no, all right, to the less important things, okay? So that you can say yes to, and that you can concentrate on those most important tasks. Right, those most important items that only you as the manager can do. Only you as the CEO or president or business owner. There's only certain things that only you can do. And, and you need to say no to other things so you can concentrate on those things that are most important. All right, leaders need to be able to focus. All right, as a leader, you know, you got so many things that you have to, you know, kind of put into place as a puzzle, but it's on you as a leader to kind of focus everything and work on what's most important. All right, number five, communicate clearly. All right, I did a whole show on this, on communication on episode one. So, you know, I would I would encourage you to, you know, go to our YouTube channel and, and to um, look up the Level, Level Up Leadership playlist and watch episode one. I did a whole show on um, communicating clearly because it is imperative as leaders that we're able to communicate, all right? Because you don't get things done by communicating ineffectively, all right? When, when you don't communicate clearly, you waste time and money. And both are precious, all right? Time and money. And so if you're not communicating clearly, chances are you're wasting one, if not both of those, time and money. Uh, the most disciplined leaders know they have to be clear and concise in the way in which you communicate. When you don't communicate clearly, you set yourself 
and your team up for failures. All right. When you don't communicate clearly, you set your team up and yourself up for failures. And so you need to make sure that, you know, your teams, your employees, even coworkers, however it's working, that you're communicating in a way in which they understand exactly what you need from them. Okay. They speak um, only, all right, leaders um, that are good communicators, they speak only what needs to be said in a way that gets their point across. All right. So you need to make sure when you're having a meeting and you're talking about things that, that you're communicating in a cl very clear way so that everyone understands what needs to be done. All right. And you use your effective communication skills to lead well. Your communication skills are going to help you and give you the ability to lead well. So being able to communicate clearly is a discipline that it just doesn't happen. You need to think about it. You need to process what you are going to say, what needs to be done, how you're going to say it. And it's something that you need to really uh, think about. It just, you're not just going to, it doesn't just happen. All right. You know, just all of a sudden begin to communicate more clearly. It's something that you need to make a conscious effort in that I am going to start communicating clearly. And so this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to ask these questions. All right. The best communicators, they actually ask great questions. All right. When you end a meeting, you give a project to one of your employees or team members and you say, give them a project at the end say, okay, now, now what is it that you know, you're supposed to do or kind of recap me what, what you're going to do over this next week. And then they'll give you a recap. Hey, this, this is, and they're telling you what they heard and it lets you know, Hey, did I do a good job communicating? Because if they said something was out left field, that's your fault. It's our fault as, as the leader. So, um, you know, great communicators, they ask questions and they ensure that everyone heard them correctly. All right. Number six, be committed. All right. This is a discipline that great leaders have that you are committed. All right. Leaders for leaders committed automatically comes with discipline. You can't separate the two. You can't separate discipline and committed. All right. Cause no one wants to follow a leader that's not committed. All right. I mean, who wants to follow a leader and, and, and do something that a leader asks you to do that they either aren't willing to do themselves or haven't do, done themselves. All right. So you need to um, be disciplined and committed as a leader. Commitment, now commitment, it looks different for different people. We need to remember that we're not all wired the same, all right? Well, you know, what makes us tick, what gets us up, what our personalities, the way we learn, the way we communicate, the way, all those things are different, all right? And, and so commitment looks different for different kinds of people. All right. And you know what? It also looks different for people that are in different stages of life. You know, when my wife Susie and I, when we started working together at a church, our commitment, you know, what that looked like at that time before we had kids, you know, we'd be at the church till six, seven o'clock at night. We'd be working away. She'd be in her office. I'd be in mine. We wouldn't even realize what time it is all, all of a sudden it's seven or eight o'clock at night. And you know what? And we're just, okay, let's go grab something quick to eat. And go home and, and relax where now that we have, you know, three girls from uh, ages 13, nine and eight commitment looks much differently. It does. It doesn't have the same hours in the same places. It doesn't mean I'm any less committed now than I was before we had kids, but it, ha it looks different because I'd be a very irresponsible father if I was here till, you know, eight o'clock at night working as a father with three kids at home. All right. Commitment looks differently based upon, you know, your situation and where you are in life. Okay. And as you begin to commit and to follow through with your promises, you're going to build discipline. This happens because you know what? Sometimes we commit to doing something and you really don't want to do it. <laughs> Have you ever been there? I mean, I, we've all been there as leaders. We've said yes to something. And then later we're like, why did I say yes? And we regret it. But leaders, great leaders, they don't go back on their word. No, they, they continue and they follow through with what they said that they were going to do because it's important to keep your promises and be committed as a leader, even with the tasks that you don't like, because let's be honest, we all have tasks 
We all have items, we all have things on our agenda that we dislike, that we don't like doing. But there are things that need to be done, all right? No job, no profession, no career, you know, does anybody have where there are things uh, that they just love every single thing of their job. They love every single thing that they have to do. Everyone has certain items that they have that they have on their agenda, that they have to do, that they dislike. With great leaders, they do it anyways, all right? Um, you know, we have those tasks that we, you know, put off, right, till the very last minute, but you do it, right? And it builds that discipline when you follow through, okay? Because um, you want to be known as a committed leader who will follow through. Number seven, okay? reward yourself okay this may seem out of place on a list of habits of disciplined leaders okay but let me tell you it is critical okay it is a critical habit for a disciplined leader to reward yourself when you when you work towards becoming more disciplined all right you will struggle to continue on that path it's hard it's tough all right, there's gonna be things that are gonna knock you down and it's not easy or pleasant on that path all the time. So this is why those who are successfully disciplined, they know they have to reward themselves. All right, it might be something small like some Dove chocolate, right? Or a date night with a spouse or a significant other. Maybe it's enjoying, you know, a movie, going to the spa or a round of golf. Whatever it is that you need to find something to reward yourself with. Disciplined leaders find a way, all right, that as they're working hard, as they're, you know, grinding away, you know, day in, day out, week in, week out, they find little things along the way that reward themselves. They reward themselves because, you know what, all work and no play turns into a miserable life. Whenever I'm hiring someone, I tell them, you know what, we work hard and we play hard. You know what, there's gonna be busy times in our schedule and it's gonna be stressful, it's gonna be long hours, but you know what, there's gonna be other times in our schedule that are gonna be down times. All right, they're gonna be fun, it's gonna be shorter hours, you can leave early, go enjoy time with your family. All right, you need to find times in your schedule to reward yourself. Work hard, but play hard. And this reinforces the fact that what you're doing is good and that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. And we all need a light at the end of the tunnel. And as you work towards becoming more disciplined in your habits, don't neglect the idea of rewarding yourself, all right? You need to treat yourself to little bonuses along the way or else you're gonna become burned out, discouraged, quit, and give up. Being a great leader, it isn't easy. If everyone, if it was, everyone would be doing it. All right, that there are just some of the habits that disciplined leaders that they able to, you know, instill into their life. All right, and there are many more that you're going to discover along the way and during this uh, leadership journey that you're on. Becoming a disciplined leader has the ability to change everything. Believe me, I'm far from a great disciplined leader. I'm on this journey with you along the way, trying to become more disciplined in my leadership. But I remember a couple years ago, I wanted to become more disciplined in the way that I ate and exercised. And so I decided one day that I'm gonna get up at 4.30 in the morning, I'm gonna go to the gym, all right? And I'm gonna come home, I'm gonna read my Bible, I'm gonna pray, and I was ready for the day by 7 a.m. And I did this for about a year. Now I wish I could say that I'm still faithful with that schedule. Unfortunately, I'm not. Um, I still I still get up early around 5:45 or so, and you know, like I said, we're taping this in the middle of the coronavirus, so I can't go to the gym. Uh, I'm looking forward to the day that I can, but it's easy to slip out of good routines. I had this routine for over a year, and it's the longest I've ever gone with that kind of rigid routine. I just kept telling myself, I don't need to sleep to recharge. All right, and I would justify it before I started this by sleeping in. Okay, until eight o'clock or 8.30 because I had a long day, it was a long week, but that sleeping in just turned into one day after another after another and I just didn't like where I was, okay? And it's going to be the disciplines in your life that makes or breaks you as a leader. Let's recap real quick. 
Number one, practice self-care. Number two, respect your time and other people's time. Number three, master your thoughts. Number four, focus on what's important. Number five, communicate clearly. All right, number six, be committed. And number seven, reward yourself. All right, that's it for episode three on the Level Up Leadership Show.